This is the Magic Word Podcast.com. Hello, this is Scott Wells for the Magic Word Podcast.com. This week, we are venturing into something that has been a topic of conversation among magicians since the earliest uh, dawn of magicians, dawn of time, basically, since probably Moses had turned his staff into a serpent. Anyhow, we're going to talk about magic exposure, not only this week, but for the next few weeks. Uh, We're going to be uh, having this as I'm planning on it just being a uh, three episode series in which we'll talk with a couple of people who have uh, recently or in the past have exposed some magic or who we'll find out what their definition is on exposure of magic. And then we'll conclude then with a, a trio of different people who believe we should be protecting our secrets. So we're trying to get a little bit of both sides of everything uh, on this. Uh, the reason it's kind of coming to the forefront now, although, again, it's been a topic of discussion uh, among magicians for a long time, it's not been something that we have addressed here on the Magic Word podcast. So this is the first time we're going to be doing this. And it's come to our attention because Murray Sawchuk is someone who has been a regular on this podcast, and we talk with him each holiday around uh, December to talk about what's been happening in, in the city of Las Vegas, as well as updates on uh, social media and what's hot and what's new and all that kind of a thing. Anyhow, he had recently posted something on some social media on Instagram and Facebook in which he was uh, exposing some magic and uh, then was uh, the recipient of some consequences, basically, which resulted in him being kicked off of a couple of Facebook pages and some forums and also just some uh, different people who had posted some rather nasty comments about his actions. And so I thought, obviously, we need to go and get uh, his side of the story from the horse's mouth, so to speak, and see what he had to say. Again, next week, we'll have someone else who will be uh, talking with us, giving us uh, their side of what they have been doing, uh, and then also concluding then with uh, people talking about protecting the secrets. But this week, uh, you can tell in our conversation here that Murray Sawchuk is quite passionate about what he said. I had to kind of censor a little bit of this because he was really upset about uh, some of the things. And again, as I said, passionate about what he was talking about. I hope that it, that the uh, censuring that I had uh, done was not uh, too, too bad and doesn't uh, harm the point of what he's trying to make certainly. And uh, everyone has an opinion on this one side or the other. Uh, Perhaps there may be some gray areas, but I'm going to uh, let all of this fall as it does and let you decide where you want to be on this then as well. So thanks for listening and let's get ready to strap in and go on this ride. I'm gonna present this week, my guest, Mr. Murray Sawchuk here on The Magic Word. My guest today is someone who uh, many of you know, and if you listen to the podcast, you know him because he's been on here several times. And he is uh, known as the celebrity magician. Uh, Murray Sawchuk is in Las Vegas and has been performing for years and years and years, originally from Canada and having been in Las Vegas for such a long time. And he's the star of his own show there at the Laugh Factory at the Tropicana for a long number of years. He was also performing then uh, at uh, Luxor and the Fantasy Show, as well as uh, being, as I said, the celebrity magician from the standpoint of being on Pawn Stars and Golly, so many other uh, TV shows and has hosted one thing or another, has been in a lot of episodes of Masters of Illusion. I can go on and on, but if you go back to uh, any of the podcasts I've done with Murray, we, we talk about some of those kinds of things. And he's also been very involved with social media as far as knowing and keeping his fingers on on the pulse of what's happening in social media when it comes to uh, whether it was uh, Twitter or then X or TikTok and or whatever that it's going to be. He's always on the cutting edge of this. But there have been some things he's been doing for decades. And uh, and that particular thing is uh, what we would consider as exposing magic. That is showing how some things are done behind the scene. Uh, and for some reason now, it seems to have gotten some traction such that he has shown a couple of things that have hit Instagram and had an overnight success. And I mean that quite literally in which he had a video on who went out on Instagram and within 24 hours had 1.4 million views 
And it was the same thing that had already been put out there about four, I don't know, uh, four years ago or longer or maybe 10 years ago and only had about 400 views. It's just, anyhow, we're going to be getting into that and find out why it is that Murray had been kicked off of, of uh, some forums and some Facebook pages and get his uh, point of view then as well. So enough from hearing from me. Hello, Murray. How are you today, man? Hey, Scott. How are you? Uh, happy New Year. And uh Thank and, you. Uh, let's start 2024, the bang, huh? Yeah, we really are. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> I yep. should say. Well, let me just ask, obviously you have opinions on exposure and you've been doing magic long enough. What do you consider to be a, a good definition of what is exposure? And is it okay? And should there be consequences? That's kind of the direction we're going. But first of all, just how would you define exposure? What is exposure? Magic. No, I think magic. exposure is when it's done vindictively, you know, when it's done in a really mean way where you're trying to get back at somebody, you're trying to purposely make someone lose work or um, or hurt them in a certain way. Because um, I've seen that on my own videos where I'll do tricks where I'm drinking, um, you know, drinking on the streets and a cop busts me, I banish a champagne bottle. And I've seen people take my clip play that first and then mm -hmm. edit right in after that exactly how that trick's done by buying a bottle from Nielsen bottles and showing how it's done instantly. Mm -hmm. Now to me, that's vindictive. You know, that's, that's taking somebody um, that's a pro that's actually doing it and it's a successful video. And then literally within the same, you know, minute of footage, you're going back showing exactly how it's done, you know, and mm -hmm. that's something where I don't think that's really necessary. Cause what are you really getting out of that? You know, well, they're getting um, views, obviously, or they wouldn't be doing it or they think they're going to be getting views. They're getting views, uh, but I think it's done more vindictively versus done in more an entertaining way. So if they did something that had no, no attachment to an artist in it, like me or anyone else, you didn't put me in the video, which they really don't have the rights to use my footage. So right. anytime that comes up, we set a copyright plan because we own all our own footage and it gets stopped usually because um, they have a pretty good strength on that. And I've been on the circuit for you know, social media for years. So we have a, a good following that, that shuts down pretty quick. Um, but when it's done in an entertainment way and people have a good laugh or they share it, I think um, it's not as vindictive because you're not targeting somebody. You know, when I've come online, I have not once um, put something online targeting anybody, never. Mm -hmm. Anything I target online and if I post something on my Facebook page is like once every four years and maybe naming somebody, it's a reaction to what somebody's done to me purposely, mm -hmm. where they've actually been very vindictive, mean, um, hateful towards me because of whether the way I wear my hair, if I've done a trick where maybe I've exposed it, um, but it's been comedy related um, or who I'm married to or photos I put up with me and my wife naked on Instagram because we're fun and we work out a few times a week and we can still get away with it before yeah. I turn 90 and into a prune and a raisin. Because <laughs> um, anytime you put yourself out there and the more public you are, the more you're going to get ridiculed. It's the right. same thing if I post on Facebook right now, I love Biden, he's the best in the world. And then the next post I put on another page, I love Trump, can't wait till he wins again. Well, look out because in the next two minutes, I'm going to get hatred from everybody. And I'm also going to get loved by from everybody because it's it's something that everyone has an opinion on. And my sites are popular enough with enough views that it's going to get traction because I don't have five viewers or 10. You know, we have, you know, we have, you know, over a couple of million followers on all of our platforms. So that's always the problem when you're when you're more popular or you stand out a lot more. You're always, you know, you're always the one that's going to get pegged off a bit more you know it's it's like the empire state building the top of it always gets shit on the more than the bottom because the birds can land on the top it's easy right. you know but in the middle the windows and the offices you really don't see much down there because you know <laughs> it doesn't really stand out well when you talked about someone taking your video and then explaining how it was done would you consider having to, to maybe redo those or to then explain it yourself in other words to um um take the impact away from what they were doing. And so this way that you would do the same prank, let's say, and then you say uh, afterwards, let me show you how that was done. And then you uh, explain the bottle and everything that, that uh, how that works. Um, or would you then say, 
let me show you to begin with how this works and then show the, the prank and how that this can be effective in that situation with the police officer. Would you do that yourself? Or do you feel like that you wouldn't want to expose something that is part of what makes you successful? Um, it would be it would be done depending on what the venue was and what the arena was. So a perfect example is um, the thing that got everybody excited this week, which I think is very funny, unfortunately, um, is me vanishing the flower and the pot. Yeah, that'll and delay the flower, fastest trick in the world. Yeah, yeah, faster trick in the world. And uh, unless you're talking to the Pendragons. So, um, so that's another debate. So, but the point is, it's a flower and a pot. And when you look at this thing, it doesn't get any more cheesier and magic than that. And this is my opinion. It's how I feel. But the flower looks like you dyed a chicken, killed it, and stuck it on a piece of wire, <laughs> which is pretty much what you did. <laughs> and the pot doesn't look like it has much strength at all. It looks like something from 1938. All right. And even the good ones, the great ones that Richard Hughes makes, and he's the best in the business making the uh, flowers Feather, and stuff. Feather and flowers, I love Richard. Right. Mm -hmm. They're unbelievable looking. They still aren't a real flower. I'll put a rose bush beside a rose bush and you look at the rose and there's a difference. You know, if you really know what things look like these days, they're still very well and they're beautifully made, but they're not sold a lot because magicians are cheap and they're not going to spend $5,000 for a 30 second trick. You know, in magic, the way you make money most of the time is you try to get the most of $5,000. So you hope that trick lasts 15 minutes because now you're getting your money's worth, you right. know, because most people aren't working every day and they can't make up for that money. Mm -hmm. uh, but going back to the flower trick though, that trick I've done on TV many times as a trick, you yeah. know, it's done well, it's done, but I've done that trick as a magician being magical and having the secret power um, that people might think I have. Um, I don't come on stage with that attitude because it's not my style of magic, you know. Uh, I know a lot of magicians come on stage and wanting them to people, you know, people so, to believe. So do you feel that you have done this often enough that you've already gotten your money's worth out of that and I might as well go ahead and expose it, even though that it's not your trick to expose? No, I think there's a more entertainment value out of a trick that doesn't look real that actually isn't up to 2023. So if we were back in 1918 and there was no television mm -hmm. and we were touring the world and we were doing a magic show like back in the old days where Blackstone would produce all these flowers all over the stage. Well, back in the early you know, 1900s, that's pretty wild. Because you don't know what the hell is going on. There's no one to really explain how that's working. There's mm -hmm. not many books out there to tell you what's going on. And there's no inter internet to let you know exactly what's going on. You know, right, right. the age of the internet's changed the game for a lot of things. Changed the game on how to learn how to play guitar, how magic's done, you know, how the economy works, you know, mm -hmm. how, you know, the Rockefellers do business. We didn't know how they did business in 1920 because we didn't yeah. read about it. Now yeah. it's all exposed, you know. Uh, how money's really made in this world. So with that internet, it's, I think, changed a lot of things. And in magic, unfortunately, and I don't know why it's our art form, but in magic, magicians are the worst at not staying modern. I don't know why that is. I don't know why we're stuck in a certain way. There's still people who are top hats in the cape. Yeah. And I just don't understand how we've locked ourselves into 1938, or we think we're cool doing a certain trick, and people know, like, if you go on a lot of my videos that I have on, and they've had 10 or 20 million views or whatever, and I'm vanishing to the champagne bottle, right? I've never mm -hmm. revealed that. But there's tons of reveal videos online. There's tons. You want to just Google my trick? And it's not my trick. And it doesn't bother you? No, because I'm making more money in Magic than I ever made in my life right now. You know what I mean? And I've worked hard to become Murray, not a magician. Same as Howard Stern became Howard Stern. Liberace became Liberace, you know? Weird Al Yankovic became Weird Al Yankovic. Um, you know, Tommy Cooper became Tommy Cooper. You know, Penn and Teller became Penn and Teller. And so did Houdini. And all these people I'm naming right now have taken the purest art form of what they've known and changed it. And to a lot of people, not for the good. Like most people don't realize Liberace can play Chopin, Beethoven, Bach very well, mm -hmm. but it didn't get many viewers. It's very... It's very purist. It's very snooty, as you might say. It's very upper class. You have to be rich and educated to listen to this stuff and pay a lot of money and go to these fancy theaters. And he was like, this is not me. You know, let's change things a bit. So we started changing the tempos of the songs, started dressing like ridiculous, driving cars and flying on stage from his, you know, a, you know, a harness tied around his rear end. 
And mm -hmm. a lot of people who were purists in that business couldn't stand him. Although he's one of the top entertainers in our world today that changed entertainment. You know, he made a really boring kind of song to many people, which is not a boring song. It's one of the best written music out there. But he made it a lot more entertaining for the commercial public. And so did Howard Stern. When he was on the radio, he was hated by a lot of people. But you know what? All the haters listened to Howard Stern because they weren't, they didn't know what he was going to say next. True. So he got the views from the haters and the lovers, you know? And same with Tommy Cooper and Penn and Teller for 20 years. They, they disclosed tricks. Amazing Jonathan, before he passed away, his last shows here in Vegas, he disclosed black art, you know? He'd show a fan of cards in front of a black screen and then all of a sudden flip it over and they're gone and they're back and they're gone and they're back and it was funny it's black art but black arts used in broadway shows not even magic right black arts used in magic is one of the biggest principles you know look at shin lim his whole show is black art yeah you know what i mean but no one knows that like shin lim doing what he does is brilliant and amazing jonathan got a hell of a good laugh out because it, it was funny you know um and no one was affected he amazing jonathan didn't do that to make people angry he wasn't trying to be vindictive he was trying to be entertaining with another principal and it was really funny you know what i mean um so that's my long history weird al yankovic took many famous songs and twisted them into parodies you know and i can't you know i don't have a fact on this but i'm sure one or two artists wrote him going out oh, you're trashing my song man it took me it's about my losing my wife or it's about losing my kids or it's about i don't know you know how could you take a song and you know a change it like that you know but but you know, it, he's entertaining. He's not harming anybody. You know what I mean? And right. and he's, you know, he's actually, you know, a pretty massive entertainer to this day. But do you, I don't think the audience draws that straight line from the exposure, if you will, that Jonathan, amazing Jonathan was doing with black art to what Shin Lim is doing with his table. If someone were to explain that and i suspect there probably is on youtube more than one thing that you can look up and somebody would be showing how this black art actually works uh i i i, I think as you got a good you got several good points in there one was that where it, if if those examples i just mentioned about shin Lim, for an example are shown out there and they're available people are looking at that but they're not chastising those quote magicians because they may not even be magicians they may just be I don't know, just uh, trolls, you know, just, just people out there who do that, uh, as opposed to someone that uh, you are uh, more well known within the magic community and someone who uh, magicians would respect. And then when they see someone, let's say, like if you were to expose or do a video to say, hey, well, here's how Shin Lim does his, his tricks or here's how anybody does whatever and exposing something, as you said, that would be more vindictive about something uh, that goes back to your original point, I guess, on that. Uh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, so you wouldn't be doing something like that. Is that right? And don't think never. That that's right. I would never do that to anybody. I have no interest in doing that to anybody, you know? Um, you know, ironically, what's funny is, you know, and I said this to you before, but magic, and I challenge this statement to anybody out there, magic is the only, only art form and talent you can buy. And I can say that because I've done it all my life. That's true. I pay my bills by it. It's the only form that you could be the most talentless person in the world. And let me tell you, there's a crap load of magicians that are like that in our business. They're rich and they buy crap, great magic and they don't know how to perform it. And it looks like crap. So that bothers me as well. I mean, that's a whole other topic of conversation, but you know, just because you're rich and you can buy a $10,000 water levitation or whatever, and you do it once a year, well, you're giving it away. Like, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that's another problem with me where you know, magic, you can buy any trick if you have money or time, learn how to do it, and then do it once a year and think you actually look talented. And I think you look like crap. People don't realize the person I walk on stage as that, which is kind of like very Dennis the Menace, very haphazard. I worked on that for years. The hair, the glasses, yes. all that. Whether you love it or hate it, I worked the on brand. it for years. Yeah. It's all about that. It's not about the trick. When people hire me, they hire me for as Murray, not just to, if you just want a magician to do good tricks. I got 20 guys that are very good magicians and they do a great Sven Galley deck. They got yeah. a great coin to coin pass. I, I call know. them Muzak magicians because they can be interchangeable. Oh, oh yeah. And that's, that's, a, that's a huge, and I, a, you know, that's a huge bit of our, our industry, but you know, to, to become a piff or a tape face, you know, um, or people like that who's really gone far left or for a right, or even me just doing wild things in my career, you know, the way I look and things I've done for PR and stuff like that 
it takes a risk and you're going to get haters. You know what I mean? And that's a problem. And the problem with magicians is they do these things. And I've seen more magicians do normal magic, not giving away magic on stage. And they're giving away magic on stage, being a real magician, thinking they're good. <laughs> and I got a huge problem with that. And there's a crap load of magicians like that. That's true. And so they're not giving away tricks in the sense of me doing a prank with my wife and she's exposing me. It's just they're sloppy. But they're just not good. They yeah. just haven't done the time and they yeah. refuse to do the time. They won't rehearse. They won't practice. They won't take dance lessons. So they walk on stage so they're straight up, not hunched over. They won't go to buy a proper suit so their pants is long enough and their jackets fit properly so you don't see the loads in their pockets because their pockets are too small because they bought right. the suit at Ross for 20 bucks. So, I mean, <laughs> I can sit back. So there's these magicians that think they're doing uh, you know, they're making our business better, but they're really not. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my argument too is that I still have a show on the strip every night and I'm doing real magic. I'm not exposing any trick on the strip. You know what I mean? And I'm a magician. That's what I do for a living. I go on TV and I do real magic on TV, what the style I do. And then online, I do everything from cop pranks to helping the homeless to doing parking pranks and stuff like that. You look at all my cop pranks. There's cops on there that are happy, happy about that either. Unfortunately, I'm not in Metro and I don't know them. The mm -hmm. thing is, I am in magic. So when I see the five or 15 guys that I've known since I was a kid growing up um, and they're really pissed off at me, well, I know them. So yeah, it hurts a bit more because I go, guys, I'm not doing it to hurt you. I've never, and there's a couple of people in, in these things they've written who I worked with once in my life, right? And uh, for like maybe an hour somewhere in China or somewhere in uh, Europe or even the States, and we're friends on Facebook right. for 20 years because I just haven't taken them off. And I haven't, but you know what? I go and do a charity to raise money for rescue dogs, which I'm huge, very passionate about, or hunger here in Vegas, three squared, sit, doing some cancer stuff, which I love giving back. And it's great karma. I took that page out of Lance Burton's book. He did it while mm -hmm. he was here for all those years. I think it was a great thing. And I'll do all these posts about these great things. And not one of those, and I'm saying that as I am, could write me on there and congratulate me. You're doing good, Murr. Glad you're using magic for a really great thing. You're using your vocation to really pay back other people that need help from cancer to dog rescuing to homing, feeding the homeless. Not one of those son of a guns, but they've been following me for 20 years. They wouldn't like a thing or write anything nice about me. But yet I do one thing and I crack the door open just enough to give them enough permission to shit on me. They will. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened last week. And it just goes to show you how jealous the industry is. You know what I mean? Because, you know, why wouldn't they say something nice when it's because it's easier to bash somebody for a negative than say something nice. It's the same reason with Yelp. Yelp, people who go to a good show, they never come back and write amazing show. Well, that's what you paid for is amazing show. But you do one thing wrong or even their drink service is wrong or the air conditioning is too cold in there. They'll write a one star Yelp review, not even about your show, but it's stuck on your page because right. the air conditioning was too cold. So now I got this crappy review, nothing to do with my entertainment building, but the environment they're in. So it's just, that's the world, you know, that we're in, unfortunately. And, and none of these guys I've ever gotten a Christmas card from, I don't even have their phone number. They've never written me or called me and said, Hey man, how's life? You know what I mean? But yet when they have that access, which I hate social media for that, they can show you at whether they know you or not. And the sad thing is none of those guys know me. You know what I mean? They don't know my life, what I do in my life. You know, they all know the stuff they want to write about, you know, whether I pose naked somewhere or I reveal the trick or my hair looks like I'm gay, whatever the hell it is. You know, I've always dealt with that since I was like seven years old in my life. So it's never at my age now, at 50 doesn't really affect me. You know what I mean? Because once again, I never got a Christmas card from them and I never sent them one either. You know, and I never even know they were my friends on Facebook <laughs> until I actually wrote something against me. And now what's great is I got about 35 more openings for friends on Facebook <laughs> because I don't need those you know watching my crap and just ridiculing me because they're either right. jealous because they're like i don't know how murray got a show in the las vegas strip doing spot card and doing silk and egg you know what i mean yeah well hell jeff hobson's one of the best magicians out there he eats fire and he does the egg bag it has right. nothing to do with the trick people it has to do with your personality that's what really makes the star or the celebrity or why you walk on stage you know what i mean so mm -hmm. that's that's my two cents on on a lot of that you know i know i've answered a lot more probably questions than you asked me but but that's kind of where i sit back and is revealing things good but um, no, it's not if you're not entertaining and if you're doing it in a really mean way to get back at somebody, you know, but the amount of comments I got on that post from people that was in David Sandy's group. Uh, I didn't even know I was a part of that group. Actually, I must have read something five years ago and I was in it. 
Um, but everyone's sent me screen captures of what people have written about me. And what I've done is I've saved every one of those. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to release one every couple of weeks to let people know that it was them writing that stuff about me. And I don't care whether they love it or not, but it's important sometimes. You ever see yourself get angry on video to somebody? Mm -hmm. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. It is not nice because you think I couldn't be that mean. Then you see yourself yelling at somebody or just saying something rude to somebody and somebody's captured on video and go, oh, I look, I look horrible. Like that is not the person I need to be. Like that is what are we doing? And I've saved every one of those because I, I have other people on those pages. So I've, I've purposely done that for my own uh, litigation. But but I'll release one at a time just for the hell, because you probably want to ridicule me, make fun of me, but you don't know who you're dealing with either because I love social media. I know how to get PR. I'm good at getting attention if I need it. And you've just handed me a gift to show me you're a real. And I'm okay with that mm -hmm. because you're not happy at something I've done, but just because say I've exposed a trick and you're not happy I've exposed a trick. Why are you making fun of my wife? Why are you make fun of my hair? Why you make fun of my magic that you've never even seen my show because you wouldn't buy a ticket to my show because you're too cheap to spend the 30 bucks. Because every time Magic Live's here, I get 200 emails. Hey, I'm in town. Can I come see your show? No, you can afford the 30 bucks. You can afford 500 bucks for a convention. You can spend 30 bucks to me. You got a $500 flight from New York or wherever the hell you live. You're Ubering for 20 bucks around and you want, really? You know, and these are the people, the same people that want to talk smack about me online, you know, and it's just the way it is. Unfortunately, if I was a birthday party magician and no disrespect for them, because I did it for seven years and I love kids, love birthday parties. And you're doing your little rural area and you're making some great money and no one knows about you. You can do what you want because no one's going to you because they really just don't know about you. Right. But when you're trying to get ahead, trying to get attention and you're on TV every week, whatever show you're on and trying to make a living and be a little um, more successful than others, just in a public vein, you're going to get a lot more. It's just the way it is. Well, you, you said a lot, and there's a lot to unpack uh, over there. One thing I want to go back to that was a comment uh, in one of the threads uh, that you may or may not then have seen, and that had to do with when you were talking about your philanthropic activity and the things you pay forward. And someone had said, well, you know, paying indulgences should not necessarily absolve you from your uh, actions or future actions then as well. In other words, that, okay, I feel good about myself. I'm going to, I'm going to donate this. I'm going to, you know, pay for this. Or, or whatever, uh, again, to make you feel better about yourself. It, in what sense? Like me helping the homeless? Yes. In so helping I, can, the homeless I can help or... the homeless and then go rob a bank tomorrow, that kind of thing? No, the fact that, it, it, uh, you know, I can... I can get a pass from magicians. They're going to think it's okay uh, because I'm a nice guy and I, the more I do good in the community, they will recognize that. Or even if they don't, I feel good about myself, good enough that I can go out and do these kinds of exposures. Yeah, see, I have never, I never got into magic to entertain magicians. Because if I did, I would be poor. Like I'm not a lecturer. I, you know, I'm not somebody who's amazing like Michael Lamar or Aldo Columbini or Daryl, you know, God rest his soul, who are brilliant at creating, creating tricks and then remarketing them, selling them to the magicians. You know, they made a lot of money off that stuff. You know, right. I've just never been one to create a trick and sell it right away to make money off it. You know what I mean? I've always bought a trick and then I wanted to perform it. You know, I've never, I've never seeked out magicians for my financial gain to make a trick and have them buy it. Like I've never, that's not, you know, and I'm nothing wrong with that. I think it's great. But I, you know, my problem too is these magicians make these amazing tricks, but they don't know how to make themselves famous by making the tricks and getting out there and performing them. Like Marv Roy or Jack Codell, they created these tricks to go work yes. and make money and never give, never give the secrets away to any magician. Jack Codell cut all the pockets out of his jackets before really? he donated them to museums. So they huh. couldn't figure out where the pockets went for the birds and stuff. You know That's what I mean? Interesting. Um, Marv Jacket is locked in a, you know, in Copperfield Museum. No one knows where the wires are and stuff like that. And I have a few cases here as well. And no one's going to ever know about that because there's no need for that. You know what I mean? There's no entertainment purpose revealing those things. It doesn't, it doesn't work for entertainment purposes, but but it's amazing how most magicians create a trick and within a week they try to sell and make money off magicians, which is great. That's fine. Nothing's wrong with doing that. And some are very successful at it. But but I've always created things for the public, not for magicians. It's never been my it's nice that I've been accepted in some magic worlds with my CD act and compact discs and stuff back in the day. And I won some awards and all that. 
And I think that's nice. I, I think it was nice to be looked at that. I've created seven to 15 tricks in the world of magic uh, that I think are pretty good. I've just never sold them. You know what I mean? What if, somebody, be, what if somebody exposed those? Of the tricks that wouldn't you bother me as long as they're making money off it and they're doing well. I don't have a problem with that. You know what I mean? Because see, every time I create something, here's the problem though. If I wasn't working and I wasn't making magic and I wasn't moving ahead and I wasn't so aggressive, I don't think people realize I wake up nine in the morning and I go to bed at two in the morning and I pretty much work all that time. I know that. Okay. And people don't realize to be successful in something, it, you just don't get lucky and get one hour and you work on something and maybe it hits. You just don't, it doesn't work like that. And um, as fr frivolous and and weird as people may think I am online, they unfortunately don't know how I operate. You know, you do. We're dear friends. You're like a father to me. But but most people don't. And it's not important. I don't want them to know because I don't want them to know my secrets on how what I do and how I get certain things. You know, it's not it's not that important. But I've never catered myself to the magic community. I've won a lot of awards. And I've been honored for some nice things, which I think is amazing, which I love. But I've always built myself to be everyone's magician. The person next door, not a magician's magician. Yeah, I've created a few things, but there's my appearing out of a piece of plywood trick or smashing a bottle with a card stab I invented years ago, you know, and all sorts of things, the card and ball stuff. It's lovely. I just never really, I've sold a couple of things out there just to put it out there because yeah. I thought, why not? I'm not using it a lot. It's not going to really affect me, you know? And I've sold a few tricks to people who have actually called me and done it. So I've contributed if I wanted to, to the art of magic, but I don't think, and this is my own opinion again, but I don't think enough magicians and i go back to this thing which i stand on is the only art form you can pay to look talented you know if i gave any one of those magicians who think they're good magicians a violin six juggling balls hell i'll give them three juggling balls why not let's just make it easy um you know a harp um they couldn't a microphone they no one to sing and be a singer even a good singer has to train and work every day on their voice mm -hmm. magicians get one trick realize you tilt the box sideways the beat falls over the drawer opens nothing you tilt it the other way it is you could literally walk in the next room and do that trick right away and so they go out and get their business cards made that same day and they do and people do this and this is my biggest problem with our art form that's why people still don't take magicians seriously they don't honest to god if i didn't have a name in business and my wife said hey guess what i married a magician like oh my god can you pay the bills mm -hmm. because that's the question how can you pay your bills doing crappy tricks because most of our art form unfortunately cannot be taken seriously because there's so much crap magic out there because we can buy our art form and that's my problem. And that's not the reason I'm exposing stuff. I'm just saying, I wish people who are in our art form, if people want a beef to pick with people, I'd love to see, you know, a movement being made going, if you're going to buy the tricks and you can afford them, take the time to learn them and do them well. Don't think you can do them just because you read the instructions, because that's what happens with 80% of our industry. You know, most people don't take it and really learn how to be, be entertaining with it. And that goes back to my main point, what I'm getting to, is most magicians aren't entertaining. They do a mm -hmm. trick, right? Mm -hmm. And if you kind of really put it back together, someone's go, someone's gonna go, wow, that's wow, okay, great, wow, you did it, you know, good on you, you fooled me, it worked, wow. But to me, that's that's not what an entertainer is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, Much you know, more. Bruno Mars could just stand on stage in a stool and not move and sing an hour and a half of songs, but that he probably wouldn't be Bruno Mars. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, James Brown wouldn't have been James Brown if he just sat mm. in the stool and, and went, hey. <laughs> That's Get right. it back. You know, <laughs> it's just you want to see James Brown split and smack his nest on the stage and wear a cape and run off stage. But that's, you know, but but a lot of musicians were like, oh, he's all full of flair and flash. He's, he's just singing three, you know, three chords in a note, you know, but mm -hmm. he's a legend, you know. So he got flack from that. Like same thing Liberace did. Anything you try to change away from the norm, you get flack for it. So my bottom line is to be entertaining. So if you can expose a trick that is really funny that turns the audience literally over and it hits and they either laugh or they can't believe they got fooled. They go, son of a gun, he got me. That's entertainment. When people can literally naturally laugh or clap or get a reaction and it's not hurting anybody. Look, if I did that trick, which I do, I've been doing for, here's the thing, the 20, 20 years now, I've been doing that trick the same way the same way they saw it on that video. Mm -hmm. I walk on stage, I do this whole big trick, kind of very Tommy, Tommy Cooper-ish. Tommy Cooper gave a lot of tricks away as well. 
And I walk forward and I, it vanishes. I take the bow. The audience is clapping and they're clapping. A very nice clap. They're going, oh, he vanished yeah. it. Well, you're a magician. That's what you're supposed to do. That's why we're watching a damn magic show. So I cover it. It vanishes. I even set it up going, I'm going to vanish the flower in one second flat. So I'm telling them what I'm going to do already. So there's no mystery anymore. They're going to know what's going to happen. And if it mm -hmm. works, guess what you get? That's what you get. A nice little golf clap. Golf That's clap. what you get. So I do it. I walk forward, take the bow, stand up. And I go, thanks so much, folks. One of the harsh tricks in the history of magic. I invented that 20 years ago in metal shop class. And as I'm talking, Lefty walks behind me or my wife or another stage tech, because I can teach this to anybody. They grab it three steps away from me before they get off stage. They pull it in half. Don't even look at the audience. They look at it, make a funny gesture and walk off. And the minute they do that, that golf clap turns into a roar every night. Because first of all, they got fooled unexpectedly. They said, oh, nice job. And then the kicker on that is three to five times stronger than the actual trick that I was doing. Hmm. And the audience had a great time. They enjoyed it. And you know what? They're going to come back and see me again do it because they're going to go, no, no, I can't tell you what's going to happen. You just got to watch the thing. It's just, it's funny. You just got to watch it. So, and the only people, if I had a thousand people in that audience and there were seven magicians in the audience and the rest were laymen that had nothing to do with the magic world. They were doctors, lawyers, chiropractors, firefighters, singers, dancers, jugglers. Seven people in the audience would be really pissed off going, I cannot believe he's ruining the art. He should be banished and he should be killed and put up on a stake. And the other 900 and, you know, 92 people would be cracking up, laughing and walking away, having a hell of a good time because that's what it's about, entertainment. And the problem with magicians, I think a lot of them are, we take ourselves too seriously. We just do. Like I see so many magicians that I'm looking and watching going, are you kidding me right now? Are you? Do you really think, you make do you think the audience is believing this you know what i mean and there's mm -hmm. some of it the person on stage is so unaware of how they work how they perform and what they're really trying to get across the audience is like this guy's got to be shit. you know what i mean mm -hmm. like this guy really because we're, we're our worst critics we don't want to look at ourselves and go yeah it's just not that good well i got a buddy of mine in town doing a trick in a show right now it's horrendous i'm not going to mention his name it's horrendous but he keeps it in the show because he bought it spent the money for it and he's going to keep it in the show. But it's crap. It doesn't fool anybody. And I know that because five, ten people have told me it's crap. You know, and I've seen it myself. And, and he's a very smart man, very educated, brilliant magician, actually. But he bought the trick. He spent the money and he's putting it in the show. I'm like, that doesn't mean you should put it in the show. Yeah. You know, I, I so. want to go back to something, though, that you had mentioned. And I don't want to let this slip. And it's yeah. the, the cogent question for really the whole chat we're having. And that is that you were saying, well, that's not the reason that I do exposure. And then you went on to something else. What is the reason that you would that you do exposure? For entertainment value. OK, so nothing is beyond bounds except for unless it's vindictive to expose something. Totally. Um, because. I I'm on stage as an entertainer. I don't, you know, I do magic. I'm a magician, of course, but I've been doing comedy for 20 years. And I know mm -hmm. people listen to this going, he's not funny. I get it. Comedy is subjective. There's a lot of people that don't think Kevin Hart's funny, but guess what? He sells arenas. So, you know what? He's funny. Yeah. Um, but my point is that's the way it works. I've always walked on stage trying to be an entertainer. Here's an example. I was doing cruise ship back in 1997. I was, my early 20s and i did tricks in my cd act and all my tricks that i normally did and trying to be funny i put three jokes in there hack jokes you know <laughs> hickory dickory dock or what are these old jokes they've been around since milton milton burroughs days but i didn't know how to be funny but i knew that jokes would work and so i would in between my magic i do a joke or two and i got a great reaction because i just knew how to tell a joke or share a story right sure. and i'd make it around my world so it'd be a little different but the punchline was still there and i remember sitting around his name was jerome kelly a, a really funny uh, comedian out of LA um, at that time. And we're sitting having a drink on the cruise ship. And these were on cruise ships for 650 passengers, like a real ship. Like mm -hmm. you saw everybody that week. He sits down with me, he says, Murr, I said, your magic's great. Like you just, you, you know, you fool everybody. I said, but you, you did two, two or three jokes and you made a quick thing with a magic trick in there. You did a joke in there. And it was, the joke was where I had a handkerchief on the floor. I threw it off stage and it flew off stage. Mm -hmm. And I did the thank you and bow. And he walked and the guy walked out with a fishing pole with a handkerchief hanging off. Of it. <laughs> Funny. My, which lefty does with me, yeah. which I'm giving away the floating handkerchief because it's the same way Lance Burton did in his show and say it's just you didn't see didn't see the line. Uh, Lance Burton's not using a fishing pole, he's using a, a motorized reel. Yeah, yeah. What's the difference? But no one connects those two. It's entertainment. And when when the stagehand busts me or my wife busts me, 
it's just funny. It's just a funny premise. Unfortunately, we laugh at that. You know what I mean? Maybe magicians don't, but it's a very small percentage that are magicians that don't laugh compared to the rest of the world that thinks this entertainment is really funny. So it's one of those things where when you sit back and look at certain things for entertainment purposes, that's the biggest thing I realized I think magicians need to be a lot more concerned about is be entertaining. Just because a trick works doesn't mean you're entertaining. That is, that That means nothing. It means it works. That means uh, it was know, well made. It was not well, going to exactly. break. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, being a landscaper because my wife and I own a landscaping company. You be, give me 20 trees, uh, Scott, to plant in front of your house. I'll plant them. So say if I did that, I dig a big hole dead sure. center of your yard. And I took all 20 trees, stuck it in the middle, covered with dirt and go, hey, they're planted. They're like, hold on. I thought you're a landscaper. I am. I plant your trees. Like, no, they're supposed to be the tall ones are on the side of my yard. I want a little bush in the front. Oh, you want some to design that? Oh, no, I just told I could plant the trees. Well, that's the same with doing magic. <laughs> Interesting. You can analogy. buy a trick and do it, but then you can actually take a trick and what? how can I get more out of this trick? And exposing, I know in magic is a big problem, but it, it wasn't a big problem back, you know, up until about 1980s when the internet wasn't around. But that's not true either. You know, in 1909, Houdini released his own book on handcuff secrets. He gave the secrets away. These are other secrets he learned from other people plus his own. And yes, if you create something, you can release it yourself. I know that's an argument. Of course you can. But he was releasing other secrets that other people did mm -hmm. during their acts to get out of handcuffs from the Thurston, mm -hmm. the Dantes and all that. 1909, he wrote an actual book, like a book you could buy and keep forever. So they never go away. And that was probably the, the Internet of that day, because that was the most solid thing you can do. You right. know, he wrote a book in 1924 called Among the Spirits debunking all the mind readers, the uh, Miss Cleos of the day, as we call it, or whatever you want to call them, you know, all the people who see spirits and ghosts, you know what I mean? Um, this is a man that was really famous back then. People were unmasking Houdon also, you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Amazing Randy did the same thing as well. You know, he offered that million dollar challenge, you know what I mean? So, you know, these are things, but it was, but it didn't hurt the art of magic. To this day, most magicians, especially the ones probably yelling at me online are going, ah, Houdini wouldn't do that. He was made the president of the Sam, Sam Club in New York City. He was the president yep, later president. on after he wrote books screwing up other people's career. Like he actually went after his mentor and wrote a book against his mentor. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine? That's like me writing a book against Marv Roy, Mr. Electric, showing exactly how his wires were hooked up and how it worked. Why would anyone do that? And people are upset with me that I gave away a cheesy trick that I haven't seen done by anybody, to be honest with you, in the last 20 years. I've never seen it done. Uh, Per, I've actually never seen it done by another magician um, in any theater or stage or magic convention. You know, I mean, maybe in competitions. It's well, it doesn't there. mean it's not being done. It's just you haven't seen it. No, exactly. I haven't seen it. You know, but I did see the pencils of the bill. That's been around mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah. You know, I've seen Fester's Nightmare a lot. You know, I've seen a lot of those tricks. I haven't seen that trick. Because first of all, it's too expensive for magicians to buy for 30 seconds. You know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. The trick lasts for two seconds. You know what I mean? And it doesn't look like a real flower, you know? But the point is that I've been doing for 20 years that way. I won't change because it's funny. And the entertainment purpose and the reaction I get out of it is 10 times stronger than doing the trick the normal way. And Which, the example is I sent you this uh, as a link is I I did it on Master of Illusion. It worked great with a little girl, super cute. I uploaded on my one of my uh, YouTube pages and it had 200, I think 237 views. 230, I have more people on my street than that, but um, 237 views. I do this fun exposure trick with Danny, which is funny because I've been doing this for 20 years live and not one of these magicians ever knew about it. It never affected them. I've been doing a show at least once or twice a week doing that for 20 years. So it never affected any of these magicians because they never knew about it or they never, it never stopped them from working. It never, they never knew about it. Like, but, but I'm all, I'm not hiding it. It's always been out there. Because but it wasn't, it hadn't gone viral. Well, exactly. That's the problem. And so I do it. And literally in 24 hours, 1.6 million people react. And when you see all the comments, every comment in there, I've actually had people text me, normal people going, that is the funniest damn thing your wife ever done to you. I've didn't laughed that hard. I've showed it to all my friends. It's just so damn funny because the, you can buy that trick online and the trick's the reverse method. It's a little pot with a little magnet from Amazon. You drop the wand on, you pull it off and the flower is there. Most moms put it in their little kids grab bags for the birthday party or whatever it's a little one that comes a reverse way it looks cool right, right but you can google that everywhere it's the same way sticking a flower in a tube you know what i mean it's just a cheaper version of making it appear versus vanish and you can buy that instantly and so all those comments on on the viral video there was probably about 15 magicians couldn't stand it 
horrible. You're going to die in hell or heaven or wherever you're going to go. And I can't <laughs> believe your hair looks a mess and you're an idiot. And I never liked you to begin with. I don't even know why you're lost. All this stuff is vindictiveness just for this one little trick. I'm thinking, I've been doing it for 20 years that way. I'm not going to stop. All you is I've never talked to for 20 years. You might take a picture of me at a magic convention or not because I have a lot of following. If you tag me in it, you might get a few more followers because that's what people do. Uh -huh. And then they talk, they talk behind my back. You know what I mean? I had people over my house recently about six years ago, an act in town for Christmas because they were living in a trailer park and they're doing a show here just trying to save money. And they had a newborn. And I said, well, come over to the house, have Christmas with me. And I'll give. And so Santa Claus brought some presents for his kids, because if you know me, I love Christmas and all this other stuff. Of course. And uh, they had a nice Christmas breakfast, me and my family. And I never I never hung out with them much before, but they're nice people. And um, and so they had a nice Christmas morning with their kid running around and they went back to the show there performing at here in vegas it was over at bally's at the time and uh i know all the stage techs uh, my mm -hmm. wife used to work in that showroom for five years and this same person started slagging me off on i don't understand how he has a show in vegas and he's there. i'm like i just had you and your family holy cow and your son and santa claus came and brought some gifts santa claus even knew that your kids were in my house that day for breakfast what a cool thing santa really knew where he was must have had air tags on your kids and um and then you go back to the same thing that night and talk about me, you know? And I know people do that a lot in the business in magic. Wow. I'll go to magic live and I'll sit around the bar, talk to people. I see people around the room looking, I don't know exactly who they are because people tell me, you know, because people tell me a lot. And I got this list of people that think they're my friends. And I know damn well they're not. But every time I'm there, they'll come and say hi or ask for a free ticket of my show. And I'll let it go, you know, uh, because this doesn't bother me, but I'm just really aware of all that. And then when it's the right time to, block them or say something or do a post about them if they really want to be mean to me or my family i'll use it i have no problem with that you know but but unfortunately our business is probably the most jealous business in entertainment and i think the only reason it is is because we can buy our talent that's and i stand true to that i went to a rock and roll thing last night for awards and J billy gibbons is there and all, people from slaughter and hell mm -hmm. yeah a bunch of musicians and one of my buddies that was a joe libero dear friend of mine he's staying at my house this week from sweden and he's like, Murray, this is great. Because, you know, in Sweden, people are, don't love me. They're magicians, you know, because magicians are jealous of what I do and what I've done. But in music, they're all, they can't wait to see the next musician. He's playing guitar the way they should play guitar. And he can't believe he plays guitar this way. And the, the cool clothing he wears, because you have to learn how to play a guitar. It's you have analogy. to be good. Yeah. So everyone has to be good. So when you see another artist doing the same thing, you, you just got to give them a, a hand because they're just so damn good because you can't just buy a guitar and hit buttons like the Fisher Price one they buy for kids. Yeah. That's what magic is for us. So when somebody can buy an illusion, they're going, oh, how did he get a <laughs> his parents rich? It's like Steve Weirich. Everyone says, oh, yeah. Steve Weirich, his parents must be rich. He got all, no, he worked his ass off. His parents weren't that rich to buy that many illusions, you know, whether you love Steve or not, but he's a friend of mine. So in magic, we don't, in comedy, we sit around a green room with all these comedians and they're so nice. And they'll go, Murray, you know that joke about the one with the thing? Why don't you try this? I think it's going to be a lot funnier. You'll never see a magician often doing that unless you're talking about card slides and they're trying to brag about how good they can do a slide versus you. You never get that, you know, because slide of hand obviously is a lot harder, you know, and you got to put some time in. But it, magic's the only art form. I never see a bunch of magicians sitting around high-fiving each other, like really, really honestly um, giving them a attaboy, you know, giving them that man... You killed it in music and comedy and all that. I see it all the time because you really got to pay your dues, you know? So that's, I don't know. That's true. It's, it's few and far apart in which you, you do have people who are going to be sitting down with you and actually giving you positive or negative feedback. Anything that's going to be constructive, I should say. Uh, and I've had that uh, with some people who have been around me that have helped move my career forward by saying, hey, you know, that if you do this or that or uh, just being a director, basically, uh, which is really helpful. I, I do have a question, though, then as well. Well, do you think that the reaction, the current reaction of um, having you banned from certain forums and taken off Facebook page is an appropriate reaction to uh, as, as a consequence to to your action? Sure, it is because they're angry, you know, and the hmm. beautiful thing about this country that we live in is you're allowed to voice your opinion. Should they do something more than it? that? Should, um, they, should they should they just ban you or should they continue to badmouth you? They shouldn't continue to badmouth me. You know, they shouldn't ban me. Just take you um, off and that's done. Yeah. I don't, if they want to, that's their opinion. The beautiful thing about this country is we can we can do that. The problem also, though, is with Facebook and social media, it's so easy to be um, a couch troll. 
it's so easy to <laughs> be mean. I I dare any one of those people to walk up to me and share their real opinion and stand at me and look at me in the face and really go off on me. I'm not going to hurt them. I'm not a fighter. I'm not like that. You know, I'm not going to push anybody. I'm not going to have anybody hurt anybody. But I want to see have the balls walk up to me, you know, and say, mm -hmm. I hate you. Your hair looks like your wife's a mean person. You're a really bad person for the industry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you have no talent. I would love to see who would do that to me. I'm I'm up for it. And now that I've said this, I'm sure somebody will the Magic Avengers because that's just who they are. But I'm not looking for that. <laughs> I don't want that. But they're not going to do it because they don't have the balls to do it. And it's really mean. Like, it's really mean to walk up to somebody when you're two feet away from them and share your opinion about them from seeing a 15-second video. Mm -hmm. I've lived in this earth for 50 years. I've done a lot in my life. Good, bad, and indifferent. You don't know who I am. So the same reason, like I mentioned this too, that, and, I, and I'm going to bring this up because it's a topic conversation, but it's maybe my 0.001% that I couldn't imagine back in the old days if you're Hispanic or black and a white dude looks at them and goes, ah, oh, you're black. You don't know anything. Oh, you're Hispanic. You don't speak our language. You're not smart. I couldn't imagine that. You know what I mean? Just because you're different or you're doing things a different way or you don't understand that or you look different. You know what I mean? Or live in a different or, part of the country or something. Anything. I can't. I or, just or politically can't. aligned with or religious or whatever it happens to be. Whatever it is. I like it because here. And the reason I'm saying that is because I just closed one magic trick. OK, I did. Great. And you're upset. I'm OK with that. You want to block me from all the groups. That's fine. But if you saw what was written in the other statements, because I just closed the magic trick, it gave them the right to tell me, tell me, share magician I was horrible magician I'm thinking I've worked all my life in the business you know what I mean I have done some pretty good magic I've done some crap magic too but I've done some good magic you know what I mean yeah. but yeah. but they don't know they've never seen any of my stuff to say that but they're just going to say it because you know what he did that he's they're making fun of my hair my wife my life all this other stuff and I'm like wow one 15 second clip gives you the right to on me about the way I look my lifestyle what I drive my family no, it doesn't, you know, but that just goes to show you those type of people are in the world because they are. And they're probably the same people that don't like other people in this world for other reasons, because they look a different color or they've done something that isn't what's good for their world, you know. And like mm -hmm. I said, the bottom line is I've never performed magic for magicians. You look at Marv Roy's act, Mr. Electric, his act was not designed for magicians. You know what I mean? His opening when he walks on with his light bulb act, he produces a lit light bulb in the air. And right. throws it in his hat and produces another one and does it four or five times. You don't think a magician knows how he does that? Of course he does. It's super easy. It's not that hard. Mm -hmm. How he runs power to it is a different story. But that move is 101 magic. It's mm -hmm. not that hard. You mm -hmm. want to call it a tenkai palm or whatever you want to call it, a retention palm. It's it's if you're if you don't know what that is and you haven't been magic long enough, but it's but basically you took magic a good idea, the Midas Miser's dream and just uh, whatever. Well, so yeah. So, you know, when he came up with that, I'd be interested to see what magicians thought about that going, oh, okay, so he lit something and he thinks it's good. How can they tell it's not behind his hand? Well, it wasn't the point. He never created that act for magicians. He created it for public. And to the public, it was brilliant. He worked you know the world. I mean? Of course it was. You know, his floating light bulb zombie. He couldn't do as many moves with the light bulb the way that it was on the, on the you know, contraption because it was a light bulb. You know, yeah. a ball was easier because a ball is round all around it. But a light bulb only is round on one side. So you can only do so much with it. So was the was that floating light bulb better than the real zombie? I don't think it was because the zombie is a ball. So it always looks round every which way you move it. Sure. But it was lit up and it was different. Well, you know, like I talked with Don Wayne, different doesn't always mean better. But it was better because it was something different. But he didn't do that to fool magicians, you know? He did yeah. it to work Lido for 20 years. He did it to be on Ed Sullivan's show, and it worked. So for me, I've never created my magic for magicians. I've created it for the public and to be entertaining, you know? Penn and Teller, like I said, released and, and disclosed tricks for 20 years. You know, they were the first ones to disclose the base, showing Teller slide to one area and pop his head up in one area and slide down the other and pop his head up in the other area. Mm -hmm. But them being in magic, disclosing or entertaining hasn't hurt magic at all. If anything... It's better. And all these damn magicians are trying to get on their show now called Fool Us. But for 20 years before that, they disclosed tricks to their entertainment value, but it didn't hurt the magic community. You know, right. it made them a brand. It made them who they are. And they're still legends. You know what I mean? So so what's the deal? Would you, it's, there, the trick that you do frequently is called It's Gone. And you've had this uh, on your video and also refer to this then with the prank videos and everything. And so it's something that is a staple within your show. Would you consider selling the uh, the bottle uh, in your back of the room sales? 
In other words, after you've performed it and then saying, you know, you could do this too. And uh, here it is. I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't sell it. Well, it's because, already out there first why? of all, but I wouldn't sell it after my but show. But after you've seen you do it, it's kind of like, hey, yeah. I want to be like Murray. I want to, you know, do that too. I think because it's a staple of my show, meaning the one I did online is over 210 million views. The one with the security guard, you know, and we've done yeah. it two or three times. So it's probably got over 500 million views. You know what I mean? It's not worth me disclosing it because I got the attention not by revealing it. I got the attention by disturbing a police officer or a security officer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you want to have me on a security or police officer podcast. I'm sure there's some police officers that are pissed off. And there were. I got emails. Because it was their world now. It wasn't the magic world, see? So, unfortunately, and I hate to say this, if you want to get somewhere in life or entertainment, it's really a shame that just doing normal, nice magic doesn't get you anywhere. And what I mean by that is, because there's an argument there as well, I'm talking about entertainment. Why does Howard Stern stand out? Why does... Um, Madonna stand out. Why did controversial stand out? Huh? They're controversial. Exactly. You either have to be loved or hated to become really well known. Unfortunately, if I mentioned to everybody here, you know what? I love Dr. Phil. I could actually post that on Facebook as a, as a, you know, social experiment. But if I did that, I'm telling you right now, half the world could not stand Dr. Phil and his actual, hi, I'm and that's what he does. But, People love that man and people hate him. If I said, I love Oprah, other people are like, ah, Oprah, you know, she's just what, because they're so famous and well-known. Jerry Springer, he made a living out of controversy. Mm -hmm. He was hated by many. He didn't care, you know, because he knew what he was doing. He's entertainment. Was he ruining families in that? I don't know. I don't think he was, you know, but I'm telling you right now, everyone knows who Jerry Springer is and he made a great living. He helped out a lot of people actually as well. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? His show was just one vehicle. He's actually a very smart lawyer and he was also a mayor you know what i mean um it's like so, rush limbaugh people didn't like some people loved him some people hated exactly. him. exactly he did exactly. cause controversy exactly and to do these things you know to be you know an idiot as some people call me it, you got to be intelligent to do some of this stuff because mm -hmm. you're doing stuff because you've thought about things and it's good if it's going to get a reaction or not you know what i mean if i didn't want to get a reaction or if i didn't want to stand out i wouldn't comb my hair like this I wouldn't wear these tinted glasses, which I actually need because they're bifocals. Um, I wouldn't wear wild looking outfits. I would. I wouldn't pose naked with my beautiful wife on Instagram if I wanted to be, you know, not worried about what people say. You know what I mean? So I've never been that person. But I've also was raised on people I loved that uh, that I looked up to to becoming a star from the Howard Stearns, the Liberace's, Phyllis Diller, you know, uh, Lucille Ball, you know, all these wonderful like Jim Carrey, you know. All these wonderful, you know, Andy Kaufman, they were not normal. They're just not normal people, but that mm -hmm. was their hook and it worked out really well. And did they piss people off at times? Sure they did. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sure I'll piss more people off. But every one of those people that wrote on that wall or whatever, the groups I'm I'm taken out taken away from, I think magicians take themselves way too seriously. They need to, I think they need to concentrate a lot more on being entertaining and being um just being a lot more present with who they are on stage. Look in a mirror and create something new. Take a risk. Take a little risk and be a little more entertaining. Be a little more fun. Be a little more, you know what I mean? Because life's too short, you know what I mean? And if you want to hate on people and it makes you feel great, wonderful. I get a lot of opinions on people. You know what I mean? I got, I got opinions on Biden and Trump. I got opinions on Oprah and Dr. Phil. I got opinions on a lot of magicians. Sure. But you know what? I'm not going to write it publicly. I'm not going to share my opinion with them, whether I love them or hate them or not, because it's not going to better their life. It's going to show my true colors on what I really feel about people because no one's perfect. I don't love everybody. I don't hate everybody either, but it's not necessary. Now, if they came up to me in a room and said, hey, Murray, how do you really feel about me? And I said, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. You know, here's the reason I just I'm not a huge fan or here's the reason I love you. Um, I have no problem with that, but I don't need the attention by talking publicly to slam somebody because something what they've done or not. You know what I mean? Tommy Cooper, one of the greatest comedy acts in the world in England, which a lot of people probably don't even know nowadays, these young people, he gave tricks away. He'd be floating something in front of him and it'd be floating and it would actually look really good. It would, it would actually fool the audience. And then slowly the curtain would catch his back pocket and you'd see the guy back there pulling the rope to make mm -hmm. it float. Yeah, That's how things float in magic. Surprise, we use string. We That's how we do stuff, you know, or a stick behind something. But Tommy Cooper got more mileage out of doing that 
than just floating something. And I, I got to be honest with you, he was a big star in England and he was very funny. You know That's what I mean? True. And, and once again, what magicians don't realize is a lot of magicians brand themselves as comedy magicians. They're not funny at all. They're not at all. They do the, hi, Sheila, what's your name? Can I call you Sheila? How about eight o'clock? But no, that's not funny. You know, that's <laughs> not comedy. Man. And even when they say it, they don't even get the timing right. You yeah. know, yeah. I went, you know, when I had my show here at the Frontier, I went to LA every Tuesday. People know this probably if they read anything about me. And I do open mics. I had a show at the Frontier. I was already making money and being on to learn to, how to do comedy, you know, mm -hmm. and I do three or four minutes, open mic, pay my own way, free, all that stuff. Yeah. And I just do comedy just to learn how to figure out how to tell a story and be funny. And, you know, to make somebody really laugh at an audience, it takes years. You can't just buy a joke and be funny. I, you know what? Try that. I, I challenge every magician right now to go take a joke, learn it and go into a real audience that's not your friends or your family, your wife or your kids because they're all going to laugh because you're you're cute and all that. Go to a real audience and try to get a joke and do four jokes or do five minutes of jokes, even steal jokes. Get a, Harry Allen has a great book of one-liners I, I used for years. Mm -hmm. Take those and write them down and see if you can actually deliver those lines that are entertaining. And I'm telling you right now, to make a sentence funny isn't that easy. And And for the last 20 years, I've been working on being very funny and very different in magic because comedy um no one can take that away from you if you know how to make somebody laugh and you know the timing that's something you can't buy from a magic shop you, ju you just can't you got to right. learn that right. um and that goes back to me arguing that ours is the only art form you can buy and think you're really good when you're not you know right well to, to wrap this up i want to look to the future then also uh it sounds like that you are comfortable with what you have done and what you are doing do you i assume continue want to continue to doing what you're doing you know since there's nothing wrong with what you see that you have done uh do you believe that you will expose more i think you had told me when we were talking here recently uh, before we started recording that if it's sold at Walmart, I'll show you how it's done. I mean, if it's out in the public domain, that it's okay. So again, to kind of conclude, do you, what, what is your future of what you think you want to do with this and where you think that it will get you and good or bad? I mean, we have piss off more magicians or <laughs> what you might be doing or, and, and do you Well, care? first of all, my goal is not to piss off more magicians. My goal <laughs> is not to get kicked out or banned out of uh, groups that I didn't even know I was actually in, to be honest with you, um, on Facebook. Um, I, I'm not doing anything to piss anybody off vindictively. That's not my goal. I'm just right. being Murray, the magician, entertaining people. And I think the internet and um, the way the world works now is a lot different than 1983. And a lot of magicians haven't put a grip on that yet. They have not. And they're stuck in 1978, and that's fine. But I don't think they've really accepted the internet. And here's the problem. I'll, if I'm disclosing a trick, Google that trick, and I bet you somebody else is doing it online now way worse and way more than I am in a vindictive way because the internet's out there with magicians who aren't non-magicians. So is it okay then if I wasn't a magician and I was a doctor and for fun on my weekends, I just bought tricks and exposed because it was kind of fun and cute to do, would it bother you? It wouldn't because no one would even know who I am. Right. No one, I'm not a magician. So if I'm, here's a question, if I'm not in the magic society and I'm not a magician exposing, which there is thousands of those videos online right now, is it okay? And then why is it okay for them to expose it and not someone in magic? Because you and should know better is what they think. I should know better, but it's already happening because we're already behind the eight ball in magic because it's been exposed since day one of the internet. Mm -hmm. So we need to get better tricks, be more entertaining, and create ourselves as an entity. Meaning I want to go see Scott Wells. Not because he does a, not because he can do magic, it's because Scott Wells is damn well entertaining and funny mm -hmm. and just great. And whatever he does on that stage for an hour where he's exposing tricks, doing tricks, mind reading, he's wonderful. I need to go see Scott Wells. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to work on as magicians. Work on yourself as a star, as an entertainer, because the Internet's already destroyed magic already for revealing tricks. So don't blame me for that. That happened. That's been happening for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So so let's catch up to what's going on right now. And you can throw all the blame on me. But for the last 25 years, the internet's been around or 30. It's been going on. So if you want to use me as a scapegoat, you can do that. But we can go back to Penn and Taylor, Amazing John, and Tommy Cooper, Houdini, if you want to go back. I just happen to be the person right now, I guess, because unfortunately, I got 1.6 million views and it's growing. If I got one view, no one would give a shit.
unfortunately. Um, and also there's money on the other side of that because we're a paid site with with all my stuff and monetizing that. So that's a whole other thing which I never talk about. But there's a there's a sense of income on that as well, whether I do magic right, wrong, or I just prank cops or people. But I think we need to catch up to where magic is in 2023. And it's been being exposed for the last 30 years online. So don't blame me for that or use me as a scapegoat. Be better performers, be better magicians, and be entertaining. That's it. Just go out there and take that audience away for an hour. Whatever you do, do jokes, expose tricks in a funny way that makes the audience go nuts. And they just think it's the funniest thing, like Tommy Cooper, like Penn and Teller did, or don't at all. But at the end of the day, just don't go out there and do a, a magic trick the way you read it in the instructions and do it poorly. Just because you read the instructions and know how it works does not mean you're not a performer. Okay. Well, <laughs> fair enough. Well, yeah. that's my that's my counteraction going, great, I'm not exposing, uh, I'm exposing magic, but the guys who think they're not exposing magic and doing good magic, you know what? Look in the mirror a little bit and get that trick just a little bit better because, you know, you're flashing a lot, you know, or you're <laughs> giving it away when you think you're not. So you're doing more harm to magic creating us magicians as cheesy birthday party magicians because you're doing a crap trick because you haven't worked on it long enough. Mm -hmm. You know, work on it long enough. Or if you do expose it, make it hilarious. Make it so it does get 2 million views. And I go, I applaud you. Go for it, you know? Yeah. Um, if you want to be vindictive and put me on there and expose all my tricks, you can do that as well because you want to be mean. But if you do that, just make sure it's entertaining and you get a lot of views and I will be more than happy to comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the one, I guess the last thing I'll say, you just touched on the fact that there is money in this and I'm not going to go into the details on that, but there have been those people who of course recognize that there is money to it. And they have uh, some of the comments I've read is like, well, Murray must be really hurting financially because he's having to, uh, to, to sell these tricks now by exposing them. I'm thinking this is uh, now your only lifeblood of, uh, of in income. I mean, I know of course, the kinds of things that you're doing, uh, but um, they just think, well, that's why he's doing this. You know what I'd like to say to all those people is they're probably right. I'm probably going to be in the streets real soon. Um, <laughs> probably don't have a lot of money. Wife's probably going to leave me. My dogs are all going to die. Um, I'm probably going to be left a very lonely man. And I'm going to leave this right there because the people that are saying that don't know me. And I also I really want them to never know me. And that's so important. What you see online is what I choose to put online. And mm -hmm. that's really important because for all my life, I've been super shy. I've been made fun of since I was seven years old. And I had my own little paper at age 10. I remember doing papers. My mother stood at one end of the uh, street and I had 280 papers. Everyone got a paper, like a penny saver or whatever in your neighborhood. And these guys just didn't like me because I did magic. And I was starting out doing tricks on TV and home. And they just thought I was a piece of shit. And, but I had a little paper, I had two of them or three of them because I want to make more money to buy magic. And they jumped out of the bushes when I was about, I'd say about three thirds, two thirds down the street because my mom couldn't see them at that point. They grabbed all my papers, threw them all over the street, uh, kicked me a few times and uh, and wow. I had to pick up all my papers and put them back in my little trolley. And I got back to the end of the street and mom's like, what took you so long? These houses usually take you six minutes or whatever. I said, I, uh, Freddie and a couple of other guys at home beat me up from school because they didn't like what I was doing. And of course, now, if you know anything about my mom, that's where I get my vindictive side. And that's where I get the mob balls. My dad was always don't three wrongs. Don't make a right. You know, my mom was like, yeah, but four do, you know, yeah. and my mom she's always pretty protective. Yeah. Oh man. After she heard that, she's like, that'll never happen again. But I've always been person I've been made fun of and always ridiculed a lot because I've always tried to work hard, stand out, do things a little differently, not follow the norm. And to this day, I'm 50 years old now. And it's proven the same thing because of my choices and certain things I've done. But you know what? I haven't robbed a bank. I haven't killed anybody. You know what I mean? I haven't done anything wrong to anybody on Facebook at all. And I've not stopped anyone from making any money. And if you think I'm the one and you're blaming me for the reason you're not successful in magic, you're wrong. It's not yeah. me. I've done nothing wrong to do that. And I choose not to. And, you know, I think I've helped more people in magic than um, I need to share because I'm not one to share that stuff. So the people out there who think they know me, you're right. I probably need the money. Probably don't have a show anymore. Can't do magic. <laughs> My hands are probably going to fall off from jaundice. And uh, that's probably the way it's going to be. And uh, I kind of want them to believe that because uh, apparently they believe anything online. That's true. Murray, thanks very much. I appreciate your uh, defense and your perspective. <laughs> uh, it's always a great uh time to get to chat with you whenever I do. You know, uh, I love you. You're like my dad. Yep. I love you too, son. All right. So that's uh, what Murray Sawchuck has to say <laughs> for the Magic Word Podcast. That was Murray, the magician, Scotty Allen. Well, there you have it, direct from what Murray Sawchuck has to say. And 
Uh, if you have any comments that you would like to uh, post on here, uh, please go to the magicwordpodcast.com where you will see messages on the bottom of the blog where that you can uh, sign in and leave your opinions. And uh, uh, please, no flaming or anything. Uh, no, um, I, I don't mind negative comments. Just make them civil is all I have to say. If you have any questions or comments or something you would like to share privately with me, you can address that to me. It's scott at themagicwordpodcast.com. But I uh, hope again that you are going to enjoy this little series and kind of have an idea that you can make of your own of whether you fall on the one side or the other or in the gray area in the middle. But wherever the chips fall, there you go. So thanks again for tuning in this week and for listening. And we're going to be back again next week with uh, an another guest who will give us his side of uh, exposure as well in magic. So until next week, stay well. Get booked and remember to keep it real. <laughs> this is Scotty Out. <laughs>